Alright, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Fiasco, and today I have a very special video for you guys. This is my very first race in the NASCAR iRacing series, our debut in NIS Fixed. This is by far the longest race I have ever done. The, the longest races I've ever done were on like Class C, like 50 or 40 laps in Chicagoland. So this is a big jump for us. Uh, we're about to get into Class B. If we run well here, we will easily fast track to Class B. And I wanted to make sure that I ran this race before there were no more sessions. So I ran it last night, uh, Saturday night, the 9 o'clock session. And our first lap here, it wasn't that great. You see our best time is a 30.54. We wound up running a 30.7. If we had run our best lap, we would have been up there in the top five. And as we're running our second lap, it was going well, and then we run out of time. Rookie mistake in qualifying. Are you kidding me? Good start. Great start to the NIS. So here we are. I'm getting ready for the start of the race. It is a long race, 134 laps. I need to make sure I get this practice in for these longer races because I do, com I do plan on competing in the LORA. Oh, the lower series that's ran by N2SC4R. Um, if I'm sure, if you guys are watching this video, I'm sure you you know exactly who he is, Joseph Lombard, a really cool guy from what I've seen. I haven't had um, the pleasure of talking to him yet, but I hope to in the near future. And you see, a guy in front of us already gets loose coming out of turn two, and that is going to bring out the caution in lap one. Yeah, this is what I get for being in these bottom splits. Uh, just so you guys know, I don't have any replays, at least not until the second half of the race. Um, I had to change one of the settings so we would actually have replay spooling so it would have longer replays for us. I didn't know it would only record an hour of the session. So here we are on lap 6. We're trying to run a little bit of a conservative line in that middle to high lane. Save our tires because I know saving tires is crucial on this track from the track races that I've ran. And... You know, the caution comes out again. We Here we are on lap 10 getting ready for the restart. Nobody has come to pit road yet. At least the people in the top 10 haven't gone to pit road yet. So here we are on lap 11. We're hoping for at least a longer of a green flag run. None of us have had to go to pit road yet. So uh, we've, we've been racing fairly clean so far. At least for the two or at least one and a half green flag laps that we've had here. So we've lasted longer than I thought I would. I wasn't sure how I would be able to perform in these cup cars. This is actually, this isn't only my first NIS race. This is my first race in these cars, in these cup cars. So actually being able to stay in the top 10 for a little bit, even if it's like two laps or so, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling proud of myself. Now, if we'll be able to hang there, that's a different story. So you see, we're being overtaken here by the 17 on the outside. Good side by side racing here. And the 19 decides to split three wide. I'm just going to let him go. Uh, let off the gas a little bit. I'm not trying to push it. Lap 12 out of 134. And on lap 13, the caution comes out once again. We still haven't had a long green flag run. And I feel like that's going to be the running theme for the rest of this race. And I'm trying to look for my pit stall. I can't find it. I'm stupid. I know the... I know, like... The general area of where my pit stall is supposed to be but I couldn't see it because one of the guys that were going into pit road they were going through my sign and I couldn't see it I you know what R rookie mistakes man it was my first time ever coming to pit road in NIS and I goofed you know nothing more to it and here I goof again I move up too early because I'm so flustered I didn't even think to stay on the blue line but to be I just that's so stupid like the stupid mistake after stupid mistake I have to let everybody buy. I need to go to the end of the longest line, which is exactly where I don't want to be because I know everybody ahead of me is going to wreck. So hopefully, hopefully my valuable experience in Class C, D, and Rookie Street Socks can help me with a little bit of wreck avoidance here. And let's see how it goes. So here we are on lap 18 out of 134. We're making a pass before we go, and even go into turn one. We're dealing with a lapped car right below us. And I know I'm faster than a lot of these guys here, so I should be able to get to the front relatively quickly as long as I don't burn out my tires and we do get a caution within the next few laps. Which is really what I'm praying for at this point. I don't want to be stuck in the back running worn tires. I want to be able to get to the front and go to my pit stall again as soon as possible and actually put those tires on because I know almost everybody else has fresh tires. And here we're coming to the line for lap 20 and there is a junkyard in the trioval. I was hoping that three wouldn't come up on the track, but luckily he was, he was good, he was smart enough, didn't come back on the track, held those brakes, and here we come down the pit road, lap 22, don't miss the pit stall, you see we're running really close to the stalls here because I don't want to miss it, I don't want to overshoot it, and we finally make it to pit road for the first time in the race on lap 22. We should have been here a lot sooner, but you know, rookie mistakes, 
you know, I learned from my mistakes. And here's what happens. I finally get to pit road. Sweet and sound. And we're going to push it coming out. And we are going to restart in a decent position. We move all the way up to 15th here. So here we are running on the inside on yet another restart here at Kentucky Speedway. We get a decent restart. Not the best. We're not right on the back bumper of the person in front of us. And we're just going to take it easy and run our line. You know, I'm going to try to not wear out the tires too much. But here I think I'm wearing them out already running this bottom line. Which is exactly what I don't want to do. I want to run the middle or the high line. But I want to be able to get by this guy. And we're on the inside of the four here. Almost on the inside, not able to get there just quite, but we're running this bottom lane pretty hard, wearing out our tires, not the best move that I should be making. And here we're going to jump over to lap 29, we're on the outside of the 24 here, trying to make an overtake on the outside, but the caution comes out here on lap 30. And we get back to pit road once again, taking our four tires, there's really no point in taking two tires on this track. You know, the tires wear out really quickly and running on um, two new tires just feels awkward. And everybody else is going to take four tires anyways. So it's just better off to just take four whenever you come down the pit road. And don't take the fuel whenever you don't need it. But we need the fuel as of now because there's like 100 laps left. And really what I want to practice here is just I just want to be smooth. If I can run the cup car, I can for sure run the Xfinity car. At least that's my mind process. I know they run completely differently. But if I can run the cup car... Because it has so much more horsepower than the Xfinity car. I should be fine for when Laura comes around. I need to make sure that I get in that first race. I'm going to be waiting for that session so I can register in the Daytona race. If somebody else gets loose going off of, off of turn 4. That appears to be the danger zone so far. A lot of people are getting loose off of turn 4. I haven't seen much trouble in turn 2 yet. But I'm sure we will see that once the tires start wearing down. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to start competing in a league. Because... You know, I've gotten so many, you know, bad races and everything like that going into C-Class fixed. And you see even here, we don't have the cleanest racers. And you see the 14 loses it coming off of turn two. He almost takes us out. We wind up let off, off let, ugh, Jesus Christ. We wind up letting off the throttle just enough so we don't hit him. But apparently we did hit him. At least the game thinks we did because we got a 4X out of it. So we do have a little bit of damage from what I can feel. But... We're still running with these guys up front. We wound up getting a 4X, which is unfortunate, but a 4X in a 134 lap race doesn't hurt me as much as it would have in a C-Class fixed race. You see, we're starting to make some moves here. Getting by the number 9, running that low lane, trying to make some overtakes here, and then try to rest my tires a little bit. But we are a little later into the run. It is lap 48. And as I was saying before, I'm really excited to start competing in a league, especially um, some with good prestige like Laura. Especially considering who's behind it, Joseph Lombard. Um, he's a really cool dude. I've been watching him for a while. And he's one of the guys that I've really looked up to in the sim racing or the NASCAR community since I got back in it a few weeks ago. And it's people like him that make me glad to be in this community. I really enjoy his content and how much work he puts into entertaining his fans and everything like that. So, um, a caution comes out again. God knows why, because I don't have the replay set up yet. And, but we will around like lap 70 something when the next caution comes out. So you see, we went as far back as 25th and we've managed to work our way back to 6th after a few yellow flags. So I'm feeling pretty good. If we can stay up here, we should have a real nice race. And I'm anticipating a longer green, green flag stint because everybody who's pretty much an idiot in this race has crashed out. Either that or they're a few laps behind so they're not going to be as fast or be able to disrupt as many drivers. So let's see what we can do here. You see we're running 6th place, inching up on halfway onto the race. And we get a little bit of an aerial shot here. And we see the 18 coming out of turn 2. He loses it, tries to save it, and can't save it. Hits the inside wall. And then he disappears into the void like he's Danny Phantom. He's probably the same guy that hit me at Gateway. Fucking Danny Phantom. You see we get loose there coming out of turn 2. Lap 61. Our tires aren't that worn. I was I was just pushing it too hard coming out of two, so we do have a little bit of damage from that now. We're going to try to hang on as much as we can. But you see, a few laps later, we have to concede our position to number 24 because he is so much faster. I'm just going to let him by. I'm not going to fight it too much. I know I have damage. I know my tires are probably a little more worn than his. And I know once he passes us, he's just going to keep extending that lead on us. So it's better to just let him go, not try to fight for a position I cannot keep. Especially at this point of the race, I'm not trying to, you know, get in the wrecks with anybody or any incidents. 
A little later into the run, lap 79. This is the longest green flag one we've had so far. And I'm surprised that I've been able to stay up here. Yeah, I've been I've been losing the guys in front of me. But the guys behind me have taken a while to catch up to me. So I'm assuming they've just been wearing out, the, wearing out their tires. And they've just now been able to catch up to me despite my damage. So I think I'm running pretty well. I just need to make sure to keep the car off the wall. You know, you know, keep that damage to a minimum. Just run my race, run my line, pass people when I can. And the yellow flag comes out. We desperately needed that. We need to fix this damage as soon as possible. You see this 18 seconds of damage, a little more than I thought it was. But you know, you know I, I need to do what I can because we have like, um, like 57 laps remaining. You know, I'll take the hit for now. I'll lose the track position. I need to fix this damage so I can compete when it comes to the ending stages of the race. So here we are on lap 86. We have about 50 something laps remaining. We're running that middle line. We are so much faster in the middle line. I don't know why I just don't run this line every single time. Like I just instinctively put a little more input into the wheel than I have to. You know, and, and that's something that comes with experience. I'll naturally get faster as I keep going on. I've only done like 30 something oval races. I've done like 10 or 11 truck races before I've gotten to, into this. And before this I had never run a cup car. So. Um, when the next caution comes out is lap 108 we've worked our way up about like five or six positions we're running 11th now just outside of the top 10 and you see the 28 here just turns the five i don't know if there's any prior history before this incident but that didn't look too clean to me man that didn't look like an accident the 28 just came up on the track on the tri -oval. no reason why he shouldn't have been able to hold his line and you see we have a little bit of damage here but i'm not too worried about it since it's literally 0.1 seconds i didn't even anticipate them not being able to fix it before i hit the gas so here we are, 112 out of 134, we're inching up towards the closing stages of the races, and we are running in the top 10. So I'm feeling pretty good. My goal for this race was finishing in the top 10, and I really wanted to achieve it. And it looks like our pit strategy has been paying off lately, especially with fixing that damage that we had to. And we are running almost three wide going into turn three here with almost 20 something laps remaining. We're running up top. Below us is the 30 and below him is the four. I'm just trying to hold my line and not cause an incident here. Coming off of turn four, almost 20 laps to go here. I'm hungry for positions. I'm diving low, but the 35 also goes low, so I'm not going to push it there. And I'm just going to back off a little bit. And we wind up getting a position out of it. We wind up pissing, passing the 17. I believe the 17 hit the wall the lap prior. So I knew he was going to be slow. So I backed off. And I knew I was going to be able to get that position eventually. Yellow flag comes out on lap 117. And this is when pit strategy comes into play. But first we got to look at this replay. 134 is driving all over the place. He hit... What, what car was that? He hit the 12. And then he wind up hitting the 5. And then he just lost it coming up turn 2. I don't know what that guy was doing. He was he was pretty much driving like an idiot that lap. So we come in the pits. We get that little itty bitty piece of damage we had to fix. That 0.1, you know, second damage, just to make sure our car is in top tier condition before we get into this 14 lap shootout at Kentucky. So we're restarting in 10th. We get a bad restart because those guys in front of us they went off on pace car. They haven't been doing that all race long. So I definitely wasn't expecting that. I wasn't watching the leader this early, and that's on me always watch the leader when you can because when he goes you can go so coming off of turn two we'll have good speed it looks like that bad launch didn't matter because we already caught up to the guys in front of us running that high line i'm pushing it a little harder than i was before because there are only 14 laps remaining everybody in front of me is getting a little wild the guy in front of me gets loose a little bit but we wind up getting around him and we're catching up to the number 20. And that guy comes up out of the tri-oval and hits the three car, I believe that is. The three has been involved in incidents all day long. You saw he spun out earlier, but he wound up fighting his way into the top 10 again. So we're going to go below him. We know he has damage, so we sh this should be an easy pass. And we clear him before we go into turn three, but we wind up running a lower line anyways. We're going to hold that middle line, pushing up the track a little bit. But not squeeze him. We don't want to cause him to wreck or anything. And the guy in front of us gets loose in the toy into the tri-oval. We are coming up with 11 laps to go. We are right behind the 20 car. And let's see if we can run them down. We're going to hold this middle line. Run it as hard as we can. And let's see if we can stay in the top 10 and achieve our goal this week in the NIS. About to cross the line for lap of 126. But the caution comes out. And this might be the most important decision we have to make for the pits. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not pitting. 
I am banking on an instant caution. These guys haven't been clean all race long, so I know for a fact that they are not going to be clean for the last four laps of the race, so I am staying out. The 35 decides to go back in, and he's about five rows behind us. So we are restarting sixth, and let's see how this restart goes. We'll be across the line. It'll be four laps to go. Let's see what happens here. We are in the trioval. We get an okay restart, not the best. The guy inside of us is able to get a ledge on us, and then in front of us, there's contact, and the number nine goes into the wall. The 15 is loose. The nine, you see in our rearview mirror, absolutely loses it, and that is going to end the race, ladies and gentlemen. And with that... That is our first NIS fixed race. You see the 20 just dives it in way too hard. He comes up the middle of the track and the 15, he's already committed to the middle line. He's not anticipating on the guy below him to run the middle line as well. So that has to be all on the 20 there. You see the 28 has nowhere to go. He's already dedicated to his line. He gets hit a few more times. You know, an unfortunate ending to those guys' races. And you see the 15 after the race here. He's not happy with the 20 at all. It gives him a little bump after the caution already comes out. And then drops back behind me. And after that's all said and done, we don't only get a top 10. We get a top 5 in our NASCAR iRacing Series debut. I could not be happier. You know, if, if I got the win, of course I would be a little happier. But I'm super happy with the result. If you guys did enjoy that, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay up to date with all of the videos or live streams that I do in the future. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya. Part of me just wishes I could be a different kind of sinner. When bullets meet the opposition, man, no one's a winner. Fucking up, I swear to God that I'll change it. Give me a chance to win your love and I'll take it Part of me just wishes I could be a different kind of center when